Next, let's turn our attention to the general information section. We're going to remove the drawing and time fields. Selecting these fields is a little challenging. Notice that if we try to select the time field, it selects the box that bounds all fields. However, we can select any of the drawing fields. The reason for this is how the entities are arranged. Think of the entities as being printed on transparencies and then arranged on a sheet. The box that surrounds the fields is on top of the time fields, but because it's transparent, we can still see the time fields underneath. The drawing fields are on top of the box surrounding the fields, so we can select those easily, the same way we could pick them up if they were stacked on a sheet. We'll need to arrange the stack in order to select the time fields. Select the box surrounding the fields, right-click, and select Send to Back. Now we can select the time fields or any other fields because the box has been moved to the bottom of the stack. Deleting things is easy. Just hit the Delete key. Once the time and drawing fields are out of the way, we've got some pretty serious gaps to fill in our setup sheet. The different fields are easy to arrange. Simply select them and move them where you'd like. You may notice that when I move things around, purple lines appear. These are called snap lines and will automatically align the entity you're moving around with other entities on the page. While it's generally a boon, sometimes it can be a real hassle. Snap lines can be turned off in the configuration settings. Configuration settings are available using the exclamation point button on the ribbon bar, or the config option in the file menu. Snap lines are available in the global settings options. You can also turn on a grid or change the ruler units. Printer settings allows you to set up the page in portrait or landscape, while page setup allows you to adjust the margins on your page. Now that we've arranged our fields, let's resize the box surrounding them by selecting it and dragging it into place. We can change other properties of the box too such as line weight, color, and style. I'm going to set the line weight to 2 to make it thicker and change the color to a dark gray. Next, let's change the format of the date. The date consists of two fields. The first is a label field and contains the word date. It's, it's identifiable as a label by using the Report Explorer box. The Report Explorer box is a list of all the fields in the setup sheet. When you select something on the design surface, the selected item is highlighted in the Report Explorer. It's also to possible to select item by clicking on them in the Report Explorer. Most items in the report still have generic names text box, label, shape, and picture. A few have been renamed, such as image file name, image not found, and image holder. Each item can be renamed by selecting it, clicking in the design name field, and entering a new name. The second field for the date is a text box. Text boxes are often used for dynamic text, which is generated from the MasterCam file each time a report is created. Dynamic text 
uses XML tags to gather information from the Mastercam file using an XML file. The XML file acts much like the MC file does for a post processor as an intermediate step between Mastercam and the final output. While it's helpful to know how the process works, it's really helpful to know how to use XML tags. The help function contains a glossary of standard XML tags in the Active Reports Help section. In this case, let's change the date from a long format to a short format to make it easier to organize at a glance. We'll use the XML tag date short. Select the date long text box next to the date label and enter date short in the data field. XML tags are case sensitive. If we enter date short with even one lowercase letter, the field will not be populated with a value when the report is generated. Update the text field below to reflect the change in the date format. The text field is not case sensitive since it is only used to identify the text box. Clicking around the file, it's easy to see all the XML tags employed. There are tags for the machine name, description, customer, programmer, and even file names. Let's move the file name and picture fields up to fill the gap. Multiple fields can be selected by holding down the shift key while selecting them. Since we can't select the two entities in the middle of the picture, we can right click and send both the file name field and the picture to the back. Then hold down shift and select the two fields in the middle and move the whole contraption up. The comments section is a good idea and allows the setup person or operator to write down any comments on the floor of the shop to be kept with the setup instructions. However, since this report has multiple pages covering tools and other operations, it would be nice to have this comment section at the bottom of each page. Additionally, it would be nice to have page numbers and the Mastercam file at the bottom of each page to help keep things organized. We can use headers and footers to make this information appear on each page. Right click in the white space below the picture and select Insert Page Header Footer. Selecting page headers and footers means each page will have a header and a footer. Let's put the page numbers and file name at the bottom of each page. Since we don't need the header, we can select it and change the height to zero. For the footer, let's make the height one inch. This will give us some room for comments without overwhelming the page. The comments section is almost an inch and a half tall, so let's make it shorter first. The comments section is made from lines and text boxes that space out the lines. It takes a little bit of rearranging and a whole lot of deleting to get the comments section down to three lines. We'll send the box around it to the back. We'll select that line and delete, box, delete, line, and delete. And then select the box surrounding them and drag that up to the bottom line. Once the comment section is small enough, we can select all the elements using a selection box. I'll align the comment section at the top of the footer using snap lines. Below the comment section, let's add in a short 
a file name, and a page number. To create text boxes, click drag the text box onto the design surface. I'll align the top of it with the bottom of the comments section on the left side of the page. I'm going to align the text with the bottom of the box in the vertical alignment field and enter short file name in the text field to identify the box. Consulting our list of XML tags, we can see the tag MCX file short gives us just the file name and extension, which is perfect for the footer. So one neat trick is you can actually select the XML tag, copy, and then go into your data field and paste. That way you don't have to try to remember exactly how to spell it. Entering MCX file short in the data field will populate it with the file name. We can stretch the box out larger to hold all the information or resize it by expanding the size field and entering three inches in the width box. Page numbers can be added using the report info function. Select report info and drag it down into the lower right corner. Select the format string field and use the drop down box and pick the page number of page count option. This way, we'll always know how many pages the report is supposed to have, as well as what page we're on. The last bit of information in the report are the subreports. Each subreport is another active reports document that can be nested into the current report. The need for subreports has to do with XML tags. If we click the icon next to detail, we can select the report data source. The data source is the XML file where the report gets its data. Within the XML file is the record set pattern definition. You may notice that this report uses the setup sheet pattern. If we look at the XML tags in the help file, you'll notice that the ones we've been using are under the setup sheet section. There are other sections available, such as Stock Setup, NC File, Operations, and others. Since we can only assign one record set pattern to each report, if we want to include information about the Stock Setup or Operations, we'll need to create a separate report for each using the appropriate record set XML tags. The standard report Contains, contains three subreports, each of which can be edited in the same way as we've edited this one. The subreport fields don't need to be very big at all, just big enough to be seen on the screen and selected. In the case of this file, we've got a stock setup report, an operations and tools report, and one last report for additional screen captures. It's pretty amazing how complex things can get. Let's move the subreports up and shrink the middle section of the page down so everything is neat and tidy. With one inch margins around the page and an 11 inch long piece of paper, we only have nine inches of usable length. Since the footer is an inch, that means the middle section needs to be eight inches or less. We'll save the report to reflect the changes we've made and then create a setup sheet using Mastercam. 
Mastercam defaults to using the Active Reports setup sheets. Select Settings, Configuration, and navigate to the Toolpaths tab to set the default setup sheet program. In this case, we'll leave it on Active Reports. To create a setup sheet, select the operations you'd like to create it for, right-click, and select Setup Sheet. We need to fill in some fields ourselves to populate the report. While we can fill in the drawing and revision fields, these are not used in the report, so it's not necessary. We'll need to set the report template to use before we create the setup sheet. Select the current template and hit F2 to reassign it to the setup sheet we just created. Since we have a screen capture subreport, we can take additional pictures to help document the machining process. Click the camera button in the lower left corner to take additional pictures. You can take pictures using the camera button to capture the whole graphics view or window around just what you'd like to see a, to see a picture of as a detail shot. Click the list images to see the pictures you've taken. Click OK to get back to the report generator and click OK to generate the report. Now we have a setup sheet that is customized more to our liking. It has an abbreviated information section, notes at the bottom of each page, and page numbers. We can go into the tool list or image capture subreports and change how that information is presented too. Here we have each operation and the tool it uses. And that's followed by a list of the tools used in, uh, in the file. We have our works offsets information. And finally, we have our extra images at the end of the file. We can save this file in a number of formats for different readers, or send it to a printer, or to send it to a printer. This presentation covered just the basics of what Active Reports can do. It may look a little complicated right now, but a small amount of time invested on a good setup sheet can save massive amounts of time and prevent mistakes on the shop floor. Mm -hmm.